Now let us return, Craig. Let's give us. <laughs> I could have went down a dark path terrorizing that girl. Girl, I don't see no light down that path. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any light down that path. <laughs> I forgot I was sitting here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Now what were we There's a difference about? between an icon. <laughs> there's a difference between it being an icon in the world, an icon in ballroom, and an icon on a motherfucking screensaver, bitch. <laughs> know your levels. <laughs> but I love that Monique interview. <laughs> <laughs> and and see the way that I saw it, and it's all about experience too, right? Like what your life experiences are. I'm not a trans person, so I saw and heard it differently, you know? And like when we talked about this on the phone the other day, mm -hmm. I feel like Monique mentioned transgender just to, I think, I think the subtext in that sentence was, and see, it took a trans person, which most of the world usually tries to, push to the side, it took a trans person to bring us together, me and Lee Daniels to bring us together. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the way she was using it. Yeah. But I think sometimes we're so politically correct that we just fight and scream about anything. Like In the times that we need to be speaking up and out and raising hell, we're quiet. And then the times that we, you know, need to fucking be quiet, we out here raising hell. Right. But I love that interview. Yeah. And, was, and let me tell you something about Monique. That bitch is from Baltimore. Come on. And you know I'm from Baltimore. Come on, Baltimore. And we don't know other way, no, no other way to be other than straight up. And when that lady got over there on that couch and was naming names, first of all, I think what happens is because she's been on this, on this journey for a few years now, there are a lot of people that are numb to it and a lot of people who are exhausted with hearing about it. But I think when that lady sat down, sat down on that couch, she really cleared a lot of things up. And I believe what she said. I do. I think it was fucked up that Kevin Hart never gave that lady a call back. Now, I think it was admirable that he cut her that check. Two things can be right at the same time. That's right. Come on. Now, when she sent that money back with interest, that was some Baltimore shit. Because mm -hmm. what you're not going to do is ever say, I owe you. <laughs> Craig, Craig, come on. Uh huh. Uh, who else holds those? Who oh? Who else holds? Oh, those? that's you. <laughs> Would you like to speak from experience? <laughs> don't roll your eyes, Baltimore bitch. <laughs> you Baltimore bitch, don't owe your don't owe your eyes. <laughs> I'm very much so like this. Even when Gio went on his tangent, I'm calling names today, bitch, because oh. it's a new season. Yeah, and I have no ill in my heart towards nobody. Mm -hmm. Even when Giovanni went on his tangent. My house was dirty. My this and that, like all the things, right? AIDS pills in the pocketbook and all this type of shit. When he was asked, were you owed anything? Right? Mm -hmm. The answer was no. Mm -hmm. Because one thing about me, bitch, if we have discrepancies with us, with each other, you may not know, but you'll be, you will receive a check where you're paid in full and you may not never hear from me again. <laughs> Uh -huh. You'll receive a check, you'll receive a balance clearing, you'll receive a Zelle, and you'll never hear from me again. Yeah. Because what you will not say is that I owe you anything. You can attack my character, you can attack my reputation, bitch, but I will never owe you nothing. Mm -hmm. You'll never be standing on the top of a hill talking about I owe you. <laughs> standing where, girl? On the top of a motherfucking hill <laughs> saying that I owe you anything. You're right. There were more things that you told me about that interview you wanted to talk about. Let's go. Yeah, so I thought it was I, I thought it was really brave of her. You know what I mean? Like when she was talking about the fact that I, like when you name and names like that, like first of all, you can't be that exact and remember details to the way that in the way that she was remembering details and naming names and saying, well, you know, because this person, I have reached out to that person. Like you got to understand that there's some truth there. And I think, and my point is, and I think there are a lot of people who 
feel like they're frustrated with hearing about it. And they're like, oh, girl, just move on, da 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 But also there's that part of some, he, Tyler Perry is some people's heroes. Oprah is some people's heroes. And so they don't want to believe that they would have done X, Y, and Z, right? Now, moving on from that with the whole Will Packer thing, when she said that those trailers got blown up. And she said she was posting it. And I called her that same day, and we had a long talk. Mm -hmm. she, she thanked me again and again and again. And I thanked her for being my sister. And we'll, um, she, I said, bitch, you told them about the motherfucking trailer. She said, bitch, and I'm finna post them. Just give me a second. She said, I'm gonna call you right back. Okay. <laughs> and when she, and listen, and, and, and my thing is, I'm telling you, and I know that there are a lot of real people in other places of the world, but when that bitch said she was gonna post, I said, that bitch got them receipts. That's a Baltimore bitch. I've been supporting that lady since she had that comedy club in Baltimore. Monique's Comedy Club. Down on Liberty Street. And when she said she was going out to Hollywood to get a TV show, like she said on that on that couch, it was like two months, three, two or three months later, and she had a TV show. You know, but I just feel like, and I love Oprah. Come I on. love, I love my girl Oprah. Come on, let's go. Let's, I want to hear how torn in between these things you are. No, I ain't torn. <laughs> I, I, that's Latoya Luckett. I'm not torn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not torn at all. I think Oprah fucked up in this instance. You understand what I'm saying? Because people can still be your hero. You can still, now I don't give a damn about Tyler, but you can still love people and, and, and hold people up and think that they're amazing. And like Oprah has done more good in the world, I believe, than she has done bad. And I know some of y'all are a little conflicted because you think she was friends with Harvey Weinstein and this, that, and that. I don't know about none of that. All I know is that lady has been better to the world than she has been bad to the world, right? But I think that this is an instance where she may be challenged with being honest and facing her ego, because we all got ego. We do, because I definitely have one. Oh, yeah, we know. Be careful, punk. <laughs> and, and sometimes you got to be able to say, look here, bitch. But you've also seen me in, in my ego come back and apologize. Come back. You, right, you've seen me in my ego. Correct, come correct. Back and apologize. People make mistakes, and I think that I think for Oprah to come forward now after all of these years and say, you know what, we, we could have done things differently. I think it, it, it would take a really big person to be able to do that, and as evolved as she is, and hey, all can of you that. Say that over there for me, please. I'm uh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> as evolved, as evolved, Don't let it fall on the floor, sit it right there. As, e as evolved <laughs> as she <laughs> is, I'll, just, I'll sit it over here. <laughs> as evolved as she is, I believe that it's just too big of a, a pill for her to just come forward now and just be like, you know what? Yeah, we could have done this differently. But I think that it's. Uh, you really think it's too late? I don't. I'm not saying I think it's too late. I just think it's. We're too far down the road for Oprah to ever apologize. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think that if 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 Monique is saying she's she lost about twenty two twenty four million dollars over the years, she won't that back. Tyler and Oprah can split that. That's twelve and twelve. Where I come from, that's 12 and 12. Well, we all come from 12 and 12 makes 24. <laughs> that's right. That's like two trades that I like. Right. Oh, Lord. Now, 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 <laughs> now. <laughs> right, Tasha. Now, Tasha. I've, been, I, I've been warning y'all about that Tyler Perry, but see, y'all didn't want to hear that from me. <laughs> y'all thought I was just hating. Craig, Tyler Perry has done some great things as well. Let's not do that. Yeah, he, ha he has, but I wonder. Craig Bias. I, 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 I wonder if <laughs> some of the great things he's done have been an act of contrition. Wait a minute, this is a new word. Alexa, what is contrition? Maybe she doesn't know. Contrition is a strong feeling of regret, remorse, or compunction for one's actions, often accompanied by a desire to atone or make amends. It is a crucial aspect of various religious and spiritual practices and is connected to expressions of remorse and atonement. So, so girl, wait a minute, before you even be before, uh -huh. we, before we continue. Girl, that HSBCU degree got you together. 
Girl, you went down there. Girl, that motherfucker dead you in for that student loan. No, no, I, I, I'm not in any, any, any debt. Those people, those people gave me all 43,000 of my dollars. Wait back. a minute. And you used that degree to get that out, to get out of debt too? Look at you. Maybe I should have went to college, but I didn't. <laughs> but I still own a $1.2 million home and a $650,000 home. That's right. And a $200,000 car and a lot of assets. Right. I still do. Wow. But I think I think sometimes I think sometimes when a, Good God. when a person does something that they, they feel regretful about or remorse, like she just said, then they come back around and they do some good mm-hmm. to try to balance it out, to try to atone it. And it's just like, you know, and I, I think he does great things. Like right now, he's doing some stuff down here in Atlanta where he's paying back taxes for black seniors. That's great. But if there's any truth to what's happening with him and that Christian Keys, there's that balance. But and like Monique, and like Monique said, he gave TD Jakes a million dollars. Now I didn't sat in churches before where he didn't wrote checks. What about Creflo Dollar? He used to give money over there to um, New Beginning. Rest in peace, James Morton. He used to give money. I used to sit right in that same church. But Craig, like in. Going back to where you say, like, when if you Ooh, do something wrong, on Instagram saying it's a tax write off. Uh, hello, maybe y'all Instagram girls is tearing it up. I mean, down well, for church, it usually is though. For church, those stuff like that usually is. Mm-hmm. Y'all like fag talk? If you like fag talk, put a two in the conversation down there because we already got one from Miss Mary's food truck. If you like fag talk, please put a two down there. That's fag with the p p h a g petty because we got to move. We got to move from popular. Peppy hot ass gossipers. Peppy hot ass gossipers and also popular hot ass gossipers. Honey, we're fags. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mo, you're an honorary fag because you work out over there. Association? Politely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, listen, the people already was in the comments saying that you feel some type of way about Mo. Don't no, I do not. Don't I don't know why they say that. Don't come in my establishment treating my heterosexual identified gentleman a certain way. Don't do that. I'm, I, listen, that's I, the problem with you fags now. I don't understand. <laughs> y'all always, and I'm talking about FAGs, not PHAGs. <laughs> listen, I'm talking about some of you FAGs. I don't have any issue with Mo, and Mo don't have no issue with me. <laughs> you that's, fru- that's you, just you, y'all. You fruity ass guys. <laughs> I'm talking about some of you fruity ass guys, the FAGs, okay? Not the popular hot ass gossip. Right. Not what Mo can be. You feel <laughs> Not that type of fag. This type of fag right here. <laughs> How you doing? No, me, and Craig, me and Craig are good. Me and Craig are good. Thank you. I don't know Craig why they be Craig trying good. to read and look for stuff. That's just like they swear we didn't fell out before. Oh, honey, listen, and guess what? We love to play on y'all intelligence the, <laughs> because the messages that you send to him, he shows me. <laughs> And the messages y'all send me, I show here. Please believe. Please believe. <laughs> that Craig is opportunity. All he do is come over there. <laughs> and then he, she always over there throwing jazz at you. She don't really like it. We, be, Why? we sit there. Why? And she, she always trying to say she bought your house. Listen, let me tell you. I did. But here's the thing. <laughs> well, girl, what am I getting paid for today? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 absolutely nothing i just want you to know that but i just thought it was a great interview i, I really do so we're really not going to talk about how shannon sharp is now friends with that boy that was running around with carrie Rhodes. no craig because I'm, I'm i feel a certain type of way about it and i tell you why i feel a certain type of way about it i talked about this on fox soul when i was there a week, a week ago a, two weeks ago i said on the show now, whatever has happened with the, the other guy, what's what's the what's what's the, 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 the guy? The stylist. The stylist. I don't remember. Whatever his name. whatever past he has with whoever is Carrie Rhodes. Carrie Rhodes. That's the I want us to normalize heterosexual men, homosexual men, and trans people being friends with each other. I want us to normalize. I agree. I, so Craig, I'm not gonna sit up here and, and actually dig into sensationalizing that because I want to normalize. Heterosexual identified men, transgender women, transgender people, and gay men being friends. I want to. I want to normalize. I agree. Them. Now, all that other rumor type shit is. I don't. You know, that's the messy part of us that we can't d- divulge it. But from the top, 
I want to normalize that because here's the reason why I want to normalize that. Because we, we get into instances where people really want to be our friends. They really want to be our colleagues. They really want to be the same, but they, they're stuck in the, in, the, in the space of people saying you are around those fags. I can't deal with you. You around those fags. I don't, y'all, you're gay and you already have men. Uh, hold on. I have a, I hold on. Word. No, because you're, it's, it, it's right here at the precipice. It, 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 it is. It, it, it is. It's at the precipice. It is. It is. And it I don't is. have an HSBC. <laughs> and it's at the precipice. Okay. 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 Well, I need to say this, mm -hmm. but it already puts a bad taste in the mouth and it already it already alienates us what does from it do girl alienates us uh -huh. alienates uh -huh. us <laughs> from having relationships from having business relationships from having even personal, personal relationships, relationships yeah. because people in there there's a stigma attached to us being sexually you know inclined with each other however there are instances where there is sex that is going on and there is sexual things that are involved and you have to guise it under the guise of being a stylist or being other things. You have to guise it under that in order for society to really look at it at, the, at, at that aspect so that things aren't stripped away from you. Come on, Craig. Don't, don't do this. I'm listening. Don't do I'm this. I'm processing what you're saying. Like, now, well, don't how, do how much you want me to sit here? I want you to sit here and I want you to gather this thing. I'm listening to what you're saying. Because you have heterosexual friends. I do. And you know, some maybe your friend, what if your heterosexual friend was a bit hesitant on what happened to Instagram? Are they over? Where did it go? Oh no, it's behind there. Where are you gonna touch my computer, girl? <laughs> right there. So is it still there? Yeah. Okay. So what about heterosexual? What about your heterosexual friends and then and them being hesitant on being your friend or being being or sharing personal spaces or or, or or spaces with you in the same instance of Dr. Martin Luther King and, and Bay arrested? In the same instance, now come on, Craig, if you can look at it from that instance, how that was a strain on their relationship that they were good friends. Okay, he might have sucked the dick. I don't know. <laughs> he might have, but the both of them are dead. Unless there's proof. Because my Luther King does have many illegitimate children. So they're not above being men. And I always say, if a man did get hard, things could happen. But this is not this case. I'm just making a point. On, I'm being devil's advocate over here. <clears throat> and in my devil's advocacy, I have lots of straight friends. That are men. But I always put a disclaimer out to those men. If the dick fall out, I'm picking it up. 